The world is full of delicious destinations, but some places are real culinary capitals, where food takes a central role in daily life, where the culture of the place is expressed on your plate. That's what brings me here, to the Basque country in the north of Spain. Welcome to the foodie formula. This is Gourmet Getaways. Hey guys, I'm here in Bilbao. We just arrived like a couple of hours ago and we're already into our first Pinchos experience. We're here in a bar called uh, Plata, where we're going to be trying some Pinchos Morunos, which are lamb skewers with some nice seasonings. So we're waiting for them to come out, but meanwhile I'll be uh, enjoying this nice caña as they call them, of Estrella Galicia. The Pinchos Morunos have just arrived, and it's a little bit funny because this Pincho is actually from the south of Spain, so it's a little bit uh, ironic that we're here in the farthest northern part in Bilbao, where the Moors, who, from whom the dishes derived, actually never managed to conquer. But here we are, we've got our skewers, and I'm going to give them a try right now. That is really nice. It's got a some nice spices to it and a nice char from the grill. It looks like it's pretty um, oily and there's some kind of yellowy color to it that I think could be coming from saffron. Either way, it's delicious. Plaza Nueva, which is part of the old town here in Bilbao. And this place is absolutely packed with bars and restaurants ready to give you an overflowing Pinchos experience. I don't know what's going to happen from here, but uh, I know it's going to be delicious and I'm really looking forward to trying some Pinchos. So, first things first, I'm going down to Café Bar Bilbao, which is a traditional uh, local restaurant, and I'm going to be trying a pincho de bacalao al pil pil, which is a fish dish with a local sauce. Small change of plans. The kitchen was closed at Café Bar Bilbao until later on at night, which makes sense for Spain. So we're gonna check out some grillos, which is the original pincho of Bilbao from Iturriza Taberna. We're here in Iturriza Taberna where we're going to try the grillo, which is from what I understand the original pincho of Bilbao. It has a potato, some onion, lettuce, and an olive. So uh, here goes nothing. Mm -hmm. I didn't think I was going to like it this much actually, but the potato is very soft and it's got kind of, uh, it's like a, like a contrast because you've got the, the lettuce giving it some freshness, the onion giving a bit of oniony flavor, and then uh, the, the olive was really nice, like really like briny, briny but like flavorful, not, not your average grocery store olive. Very nice. I liked it. We got a little bit excited and had to order a bacalao al pil pil. Millonaria de dinero, no le he vuelto agua, no le he 
I really like the vermouth. It's got like this herby. I don't know. There's something about like the combination of the sweetness and the bitterness that I just really enjoy. We also ordered some chakoli, which is a local effervescent wine from uh, the Basque country. And so I'm curious to see what it uh, what it's going to taste like. Right away, you can tell it's going to be dry. It's just like barely, barely effervescent. It's light, it's bright, it's refreshing for a hot day like this. Chocolate is a good uh, antidote for the heat. The experience over there at Iturisa was pretty fantastic. I was really surprised by the grillo. I thought that surely this isn't going to be that good of a tapa. It's just a bunch of vegetables. If you, uh, if you know me, you know that I'm not a big veggie kind of guy. But that was actually really good. And now we're walking around to the next place, which uh, I've seen in a couple of videos, pretty well recommended, called Gure Toki. It's down here at the end of the, the other end of the plaza. So we're going to go get our, continue getting our pinchos on over there. Okay, so here we are in Gure Toki. We've got a handful of pinchos. One is uh, with cod cheeks, a vegetarian empanada, this chicken skewer, I'm pretty sure it's chicken, we'll, we'll double check, and a nice tortilla de patata with like melted cheese on top, which is a nice touch, I've never seen that before. Let's give it a try. I'm gonna go for the cod cheeks. It's a different, a very different flavor from the last one, the bacalao al pifil. This one is like definitely fattier, but it's nice. I really enjoy the flavor, and it's got like a, more more garlic to it, so it ends up being well well rounded, but then a little bit chewy. I like it. So cheers. We were talking and we just realized that none of the, these pinchos places have their hot kitchen open until at least 8. So we've made a little bit of a fatal error in terms of when we're going out because it's like almost 6.30 right now. However, we're getting a chance to try all of these fantastic um, pinchos that are out on the bars right now. And then tomorrow, we're gonna go hard with the stuff that's uh, cooked up in the kitchen. We just finished up in Gure Toki, and now we're heading around once again to the other corner of the plaza, where we are gonna find Tomai Daka. So far, I'm really enjoying this experience. Um, missing out a little bit on the hot uh, pinchos, like we mentioned before, but not, not too sour about it. Everything's been pretty good, and now, uh, I mean, we'll always have a chance later to continue eating hot food, but maybe the pinchos that are there on the bar that are just cold, get a bad rap maybe they don't get the credit they deserve so we're here in Tomaidaka and we've ordered some more pinchos as you do we've got some albondigas or meatballs de buey which is so from like a old bull we've got Morcilla with what looks to be goat cheese and like a tomato chutney or so. And we've got gulas, which is like an imitation of baby eel. 
and uh, I'm excited to give these a try. So let's start with the meatballs. I'll go ahead and put it here on the end of some uh, some bread. Came alongside. Cheers. I really like this. It's very tender, a little bit sweet, and very like wholesome, very home homey feel. Feels like comfort food. Okay, so we're running low on battery, so we gotta speed it up. Next up is the morcilla. It's uh, the kind that has like the rice in there. So you can see it's got a nice texture. Um, let's give it a go. At first I wouldn't, if, if, if I did this as like a blind taste test, I wouldn't even know that it was morcilla. It's very subtle flavor and um, yeah, I like it. It's pretty good. I'm gonna go to town with this last one and then we'll probably take a break to recharge. Uh, but this is the gulas. So we've got like a little imitation baby eel. It looks pretty good. I have no idea what to expect. So let's just give it a go. It's actually really good. It's like, um, it doesn't work the same way as like imitation crab meat where you can really tell it, like this is not something authentic. It tastes really nice and it's very, uh, I don't know how to describe it. It's got a bit of sauce, which I think is like kind of a garlicky mayonnaise. And um, it's seriously good. If you're afraid to try new things, like, just go for it. Janelle did it. She really liked the blood sausage. I don't know, it, feel, it feels like it reminds me of something, but I can't quite put my finger on it. I think if there's something to take away from this, it's that if you don't give it a try, you might be limiting yourself, so you might as well give it a try. And if you don't like it, worst case scenario, don't continue eating it. Good morning from Bilbao. You're probably thinking, wow, these guys don't have a lot of strength if that's all the pinches that they could handle in one night. And well, it didn't quite work out that way. So we had had a really late night the previous night and then we had to get up early to get ready for our flight. We were carrying really heavy backpacks all through the airport across the city and uh, we knocked out. We had to go back to our hotel for a little bit to have a rest and we did end up going back out for dinner to get some more um, kind of more traditional Spanish uh, fare. but. Um, it just wasn't, uh, it wasn't the right day to go for a full-blown pincho extravaganza, although we did get to try a lot of really delicious stuff, especially the bacalao al pil pil. I think I've got a new, uh, I don't know if I would say favorite, but, uh, I really enjoyed it and I'm going to be keeping an eye out for it as we move along because, um, it had a really unique flavor and uh, I'm excited to try some different takes on it. We're trying to keep things on a budget, so, that, so I'm out here grabbing some breakfast uh, from a grocery store. Well, right now I'm not in the grocery store, but I'm about to go in. And um, I think today we're going to try to hit Cafe Irunia, which is a beautiful bar in the city center, um, kind of in between the old town and the Guggenheim Museum and it's supposed to have a really traditional vibe with no-nonsense delicious pinchos and so i'm really looking forward to giving that place a try and uh, for right now i'm just going to go see if i can score some yogurts maybe a couple of pastries and uh, definitely definitely a coffee you can tell by the look on my face that i haven't had a coffee yet and i'm trying to not be too grumpy but uh, 
we're going to get there soon, so I better head off to grab something to eat at the grocery store. Catch you in a bit uh, as we get on our way. We're here in Cafe Irunia, which uh, is one of the places I was really excited to visit in Bilbao. The environment is really cool. On one side, they've got a really busy, bustling bar with lots of locals enjoying uh, some nice pinchos and nice beers. And then on the other side, they've got more of a formal sit-down kind of set up with white tablecloths. And you can even grab a lunch menu on the weekend for 33 euros. That was a little bit more food and more than we wanted to spend. So we just came over here to the bar for some pinchos. And so I'm going get, to get started with the first one. This is looks like tuna salad with a little strip of pepper on it, like a red pepper. So something simple to begin with, along with a lager style beer. So let's give it a try. It's like a very uh, nice version of a, of a tuna salad. I mean, it's in some ways very simple, but in others very fresh. It doesn't taste like a, it's, it's not your grandma's can of uh, sun-kissed tuna from the, from the grocery store. This is really fresh and really kind of uh, hearty. No overwhelming fishiness to it. It's just subtle and nice. This beer is called La Salve. I've never tried it before, but it's a lager style. It looks like they've got a bit of a German kind of style to them, so I'm excited because I really like German beer a lot. It is nice and fresh. Exactly what I needed on this hot day, which is supposed to be one of the hottest days of our whole vacation. I'm super excited about this. We saw that they had like a station that was dedicated to preparing these pinchos morunos, which we tried yesterday uh, in another place that was kind of specialized in them. But this looks like it's on a whole nother level. They, after they take them out, they were finishing them in like an oily, herby mixture and rubbing lemons on them. Like, there's a distinct um, cumin flavor going on here that I'm very excited to try. So I'm getting really hungry, so I'm not gonna talk too much. I'm just gonna give it a go. Okay, this beats the one from yesterday easily. Big burst of flavor. Salty, the cumin is very forward, and then the the lemons give it a really nice kind of um, tartness that you wouldn't necessarily expect at the end. Like, yeah, it's very tender. I think my wife is really gonna like this because they are. Le very lemony and she's a big lemon fan um, this is this is definitely worth it and it looks like it's one of their specialties so make sure you try it out if you come to Cafe Irunia so after we got nice and toasty in the 88 degrees Fahrenheit weather earlier, we went back to the hotel to hang out for a bit, but now we are here back in the old center and we're about to go to this building right here, which is the Mercado de la Ribera, where we are going to find some more really cool uh, gastronomic experiences and hopefully find some really tasty hidden gems among the different bars that are available there. So we're here in the La Rivera Market and I saw a special from a bar called La Bodeguilla which includes one Hilda which is a pincho of peppers, anchovy and olives paired with an Aperol Spritz 
for five euros. Really good deal. And so I'm really curious to try out this Kildan. I was kind of holding off until we got to San Sebastian because this is a really original pincho from there. But uh, the curiosity got the better of me and so I think I'm just gonna give it a try right here. Um, so let's see how we do. From what I understand, you've gotta go all at once and just uh, let all those flavors mix together. It's got a nice um, olive oil that they poured on it at the last minute, so I think it's gonna come out really tasty. Let's give it a try. Really nice, it's very salty, very briny. You get a little bit of the fishy taste from the anchovy for sure, but um, overall it's kind of a nice um, accompaniment for something on the sweeter side, I would say, because um, it really cuts through any sweetness with a lot of acid. So I'm gonna try the Aperol, see how that complements. That's really well prepared. Overall, I would uh, definitely try it again. I think next time might be better with the beer. For some reason, I get the feeling that it would be a little bit more of a traditional pairing to go with a beer. So we'll give that a try when we get to San Sebastian. I just stopped by Gloria Bendita to get some costilla de cerdo, which is pork ribs in whiskey. So that's, he said that that was one of the, well, good selling, uh, well selling? It sells a lot. So I'm gonna give it a try right now. Oh, that's really good. For anyone who likes a good, uh, a good rib, it's super tender. There's a sweetness from the whiskey sauce. It's like reminiscent of a barbecue sauce, but but it's not barbecue sauce. It's it's its own thing. It's really a slow cooked, nice, nice rib meat. That's really fantastic. I'm gonna be coming back to that in a second because it was delicious. And then I've also got some chorizo a la sidra. Sidra cider is very big in the Basque country. And so a very typical way of cooking chorizo is to put it in cider and uh, cook it that way. It sounds like a winning combination to me. And it's got some what looks like mashed potatoes underneath. I'm gonna try those in a second, but first we're going for the chorizo. Mm. So it gets very soft apparently in the seed wrap. That gives me an opportunity to come back with some mashed potato as well. It's really nice. This, the cider gives it an unexpected tanginess and the chorizo is what you would want, everything that you would want from a typical uh, Spanish chorizo. It's fatty, it's got a lot of paprika. Can recommend. Mm -hmm. I had my Aperol, this aperitif, um, to kind of open up the appetite. And then I wanted to try some vermouth again because uh, I've only tried a couple and w what I've had so far I've really liked. So I went over to Bermuteca, which is like specialized in vermouth, and asked them for something that's outside of the usual, something that's not quite uh, your typical vermouth. And they gave me this one. They told me it was from the Rioja region of Spain, which is a nice contrast to the Italian vermouths that you see in a lot of places around here and what we've had so far. So I'm going to give this one a try and see what makes it different. So right away it's, it's a lot more, it's, it's less syrupy than like a martini that you would find from Italy. It's very 
soft. And it has it has a sweetness, but it's not cloying. It's not like um, it's not syrupy. It's, it's I guess like the big contrast. It's really nice. I might have to go back for another one. We just finished filming in Mercado de la Ribera, and I've got to say, what an experience! There's so much uh, to try in such a small space that you can really get a little feel for whatever you are in the mood for. Um, there's fried stuff, there's fresh stuff, there's fish, there's meat, there's vermouth, there's wine, there's beer, there's cocktails. Uh, it's really a one-stop shop, so I would definitely recommend checking it out if you are ever in Dubai. <laughs> Last day in Bilbao, we are heading out uh, probably right around noon to San Sebastian, but I was just on my way to get some breakfast for my sleepy crew and um, just wanted to reflect a bit on the experience. Now here in Bilbao was an incredible experience, we got to come back to the country that we really enjoy a lot and uh, we got to experience the full Pinchas experience that was something I wasn't quite uh, expecting initially. Initially I was thinking, oh well, I'm going to try to avoid the Pinchas experience because that is a very San Sebastian thing, but then when it came down to it, pinchas were everywhere and it was just as much of a Bilbao thing as it was a thing from San Sebastian. So uh, we went all in, we tried a bunch of pinchos, uh, not everything because uh, there's so many options that you just can't, uh, you can't try them all. So I stopped here in a park uh, to figure out kind of what I'm going to do now that I realize all the grocery stores are closed. Um, there's a couple of cafes over here that I'm going to check out to see if they have um, takeaway. But on the note of uh, finding places that are really local and really authentic, I wanted to quickly mention the place that we found last night. It was off in a little side street um, with no signage on the main street pointing pointing it out. If you didn't know it was there, you wouldn't be able to find it easily. Um, I mean, it's on Google, it's, it's there, but then what you can see is that it's absolutely packed with locals, uh, even fl flowing out the door, standing out in the street, drinking their cañas and having a good old time with uh, their only thing that they served was half sandwiches. So they had jamón ibérico, they had different types of chorizo, they had tuna, cheese, but it was like bread, slice it in half, one ingredient in there, and that's your sandwich. Half sandwich or whole sandwich, those are the options. And of course, beer, wine, vermouth. And I ended up with a chorizo a la sidra, and Apparently, there was a lot of sidra. The thing should have come with a warning label because it basically exploded with sidra out one side as soon as I took a bite out of it and um, I ended up wearing a bit of it on my arm. So, so that's your warning when you get a chorizo uh, la sidra sandwich. But it was just such an authentic experience. You really feel like you understand how people actually like to go out to eat in Spain. Um, it's very informal, it's a little bit chaotic. There's, there's people coming in and out, drinking in the street, talking loudly, uh, and n nobody speaking English whatsoever, which is fantastic if you're trying to get an authentic experience. Um, and it was just really incredible and uh, I can really highly recommend seeking out those types of experiences. Um, 
Now, I'm also a big proponent of responsible tourism because uh, in a lot of situations, kind of tourists who are not really there for the culture and for the understanding and for um, kind of more of the immersion of any type, whether that's cultural or culinary or language or what have you, um, those tourists have a way of kind of messing things up. And so I'm going to be a little bit bold here and keep my, uh, my recommendation for this place under wraps for the time being. I think it's better if you come here, try to find it, take a look around, find the places that you say like, wow, this is, this is really authentic. There's, I, I might not even be ready for this because uh, I don't know if I'm authentic enough myself to, uh, to get in and to mix it up with these locals. But most of the time, these people are super friendly and I would say even with a simple chorizo sandwich and a glass of beer, it was easily one of the best uh, experiences that we've had here. Um, pair that with uh, the Ribera Market, which uh, was a, also a great experience. And um, yesterday was a really good day. If you have a very short time to be in Bilbao and you want to really be able to try a variety of different things, then La Rivera Market is a really good option for you because you can um, kind of pick and choose a lot of the local specialties from a concentrated place where the, everything is together and, um, and it's, it's really all there for when it comes to pinchos. I would say Plaza Nueva is also a really good option for you because it's got a huge concentration of bars and restaurants of good quality with a lot of variety and um, I would just say don't make the mistake that we made go after 8 p.m. because that's when things are going to be really hopping and uh, you'll have a full selection of the menu uh, not limited by any closures of the kitchen. So, as I feel the lack of caffeine sinking in and the need to figure out uh, what I'm going to do with my life now that there's no grocery stores open, uh, I'll leave you with this. Um, Bilbao is a really cool place with a rich culinary scene. You've got so much to choose from. There's something that works for everyone. Um, whether you're a meat eater like me or a vegetarian or someone who's afraid of fish like my sister-in-law, you can always uh, find something that is gonna meet your tastes and uh, it's a really fun experience. If this is the Pinchos experience in Bilbao, then I'm so, so, so excited for what comes next when we finally get on our way to San Sebastián, it feels like we're headed towards the promised land. So I'll keep you informed on that as we continue on. But um, for now, give us a like, hit subscribe. If you made it this far, you're obviously at least a little bit interested and uh, that'll really help me get my channel started out and on its way. So uh, catch you next in San Sebastián.